What's going on, everybody? This is the first episode of the Coffee with Falcon series brought to you by Ticketmaster. I'm Tori McElhinney. I'm joined here by the general manager himself, Mr. Terry Fontenot. This is the reincarnation of the Tory Terry Power Hour. As it is, so right. Loved and we added made. coffee to it. We've added coffee to it. Now, how do you take your coffee? That's question well, number one. Black. Really? <laughs> That's it. That's it? Nothing in it? In the afternoon, maybe a little bit of honey. Okay. Maybe a little bit of oat milk to kind of lighten it up. Yeah. But first thing in the morning, just black. Mm -hmm. Like you're getting ready to go, just black, maybe a double shot, but fill it up to the top, but just straight black. Nice, nice. I have so did you add coffee to our, because did I not have enough energy last time? And so no, you felt no, like we you need had, to add coffee to it? You had great energy. It was just for me, I needed the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those things where it's like, how can we just kind of make this more enjoyable for everybody? And like anytime it. you add caffeine to the mix, it's like, usually people go from here to here. There you go. So that's kind of how I feel. And I feel like honestly, right now, the way that we have been moving and shaking here in Flowery Branch that we've needed the caffeine. I love it. There's been so much that's happened and I feel like this is our first opportunity to really like get into the nitty gritty with you, like yeah. chat with you about it. So tell us a little bit about, I say us, like I, there's multiple people here, Sorry, but no, you're good. Off. That's why we we're doing all of this right now. It's Raheem texting. Is it Raheem? I'm, I'm going to turn it off though. Tell him, tell him that we're busy. <laughs> 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 no, I'm glad that you brought up Raheem. What was it in, y'all had a, an initial interview with him in the yep. Zoom call. You bring him here, in-person interview. I obviously feel like I know about his infectious energy. Like yep. I, I covered him in 2020. I could feel it through a Zoom. It was pandemic, COVID times. Like that's the way we communicated. For you, when did you really feel that? So you do so much research on every candidate and we use everyone to do the research. We want every, not just myself calling the other GMs or not just Kyle Smith or Ryan Pace calling the other front office executives. It's it's Joey calling other, all the equipment guys. Mm -hmm. It's Fernando calling all the player engagement guys. And again, both of them talking to all the players they know as well. It's Jake Fowle calling all the athletic trainers. It's Stephen Benjamin calling all the dietitians. We really want to get a wide range of opinions from every level. So we, we have a really good feel for every candidate that we dug on. So we got some a lot of information. I named a few people, but there's a lot more that were involved in mm -hmm. gathering all the information, looking at all the resources. So, and clearly someone like Raheem, people in this building already have a good feel for who right, he is yeah. and who the person is. And yet you want to get information from different stops as well, mm -hmm. right? There are different periods in your life and different areas of growth. So this is what this person was when I was with him at this point. This is what he is now in this building. So you want to gather as much information as you can. So I was really excited just from the information. Yeah. And then when you get on a Zoom, it's you see it right away. It, it's not. It's like he jumps right out, out the screen and grabs you. So that part was really exciting. Mm -hmm. But you want to temper your enthusiasm, just continue going through the process. And we did that. We went through the whole process. And there were a lot of really, really good candidates. Right. And it was, it was a, exceptional in regards to the coaches that were actually available. And going through all those interviews, it, it's, it's really good. You learn a lot, you gather a lot of information, but we took our time, went through it, we met with them again, and then we completed the process and set out and met, and it was unanimous. Everybody was really excited about him from all the information you gathered, from the information we already knew, and from every meeting. I'm really fascinated by the whole interview process because y'all did interview 14 different candidates over an 18 day time period. That's a lot. That is, I yeah. mean, it was one of the most, I think, comprehensive just coaching searches of this entire coaching cycle. So I know you were in those, you were leading those interviews. What are you like as an interviewer? Like what are, what are some of the things that you go into an interview and you're like, this is what I'm hoping I find out or even this is a vibe or a feel that I hope I get? Yeah, good question. And you really have to, we're very detailed in regards to the questions that mm -hmm. are asked. It's scripted. Right. And so we want to be really specific so we get all the, the right information from, from everyone. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's scripted. I'm going to ask certain questions. Kyle Smith will ask certain questions. We have it very scripted in the way we go about it. And, uh, and once we get into it, you want to do that. You want to make them very similar 
So we get apples to apples comparisons. Now, if you're talking to a previous head coach, depending on their experience level, it can be, it'll be very different. You cater it to each person, mm -hmm. but yet you still want to be able to get all the right information. What I have to do, I'm a very optimistic person. Mm -hmm. And so I always, whether you're talking about a player or a prospective player, or a prospective staff member, or prospective coach, I see the good in people. That's what I always see. I'm just optimistic. It's half full. And so what I have to do is really get in the right mindset to, okay, when you're interviewing someone, you really need to point out the specific areas that you need to look at the flaws, find out what they are, and, and if you can manage them and work with them. And so you have to get in the right mindset to where, okay, I don't want to just be um, positive and you want to really ask the hard questions, yeah. ask the difficult questions and give them a chance to really talk through it and get a feel for that person. So that's what you try to do when you go through those. And none of us are perfect, mm -hmm. but the willingness to discuss those areas where we need to improve and having the self-awareness to do that, that's really important. So it's, it's scripted, it's very specific in the things we ask, and you kind of got to get yourself in the right mindset to, to do the interview the right way. Yeah, it's interesting too, because I, I don't know how many people truly understand kind of like how much work goes into even prepping for those interviews. I mean, I interview people all the time and I know how much work goes into like just getting to the point of sitting in front of someone to interview them. What did your kind of like day-to-day -day routine look like when you know I have two or three interviews on the docket today? L take us through a day. Like you wake up in the morning, you have your coffee black, like, and you get the g day going. Like, what did it look like, really? Yeah, it's, and, and again, we, we interviewed 14 people, but mm -hmm. we did a lot of research on a lot of other people mm -hmm. as well. And that is, that's a lot of uh, conversations, um, a lot of going through the data and going through the, the information. We we're very detailed and organized with uh, Carl Pierberg and and, and Danny Leskin in, in doing all the research on every candidate. Hey, when this candidate was, these are the head coaches he worked for. These are the quarterbacks he's worked with. These, these, are the, um, these were their rankings when he was the defensive coordinator. These were the players. So there's a lot of very detailed research that is put together for us to go through and, and look through and, and meet about and discuss. Like we would meet with the interview committee several times a day, formal meetings three to four times a day, and then a lot of offline meetings and discussions as well. In the meantime, we're making all the calls. And again, I appreciate the staff that went through it because the season ended and no one slept. And right, we yeah. went right through it. So all the research is critical. All the, the references and the phone calls, we're constantly doing that. So we're having several meetings with the committee and we're, when we're not in meetings, we're making phone calls or digging through the data and the research. And then obviously we have to have the actual interviews. Mm -hmm. and, and so you do feel bad because you get a lot of calls and you don't, I, I have a lot of calls to return. And, and, and so, but you work really hard to um, be as present as you can. You want to see your family every once in a while. I was which about you to really ask, haven't. right. Like um, how, how often have you been able to see the kids, see the well, wife? Well, when I have actually been able to see him a little bit is with all the construction going on, yeah. sometimes I have to do Zooms from home. Mm. And, and so that's the one time where I can kind of be around the family a little right. bit. Um, but when I'm at home, there, there, there's some definitely some Zoom calls when I'm on the call and, and Lennox, my youngest, is throwing Legos at me and she's jumping on my back. And so, um, but it's cool because you at least the family's kind of around you a little bit. Yeah. So doing Zooms from home kind of helped a little bit. Mm -hmm. But it's constant before the sun comes up to after the sun goes down. It's been constant work going in, but it's very valuable. It was a very efficient process. You learn a lot and you build relationships. Um, I've had several conversations with a lot of the coaches that we, we, we didn't hire since then. And because these are a lot of the bright minds in the league. And so you open those relationships. You learn a lot. We all need to be constantly learning as we're going through this business. So it, it's a very valuable process, but it's from, again, before the sun comes up to after the sun goes down, we're, we're, we're rolling. At what point in your career do you think that you um, almost essentially like figured out what you, what you needed to be in an interview? I know you talked about like, I'm an optimistic person. I almost have to like taper my own expectations about getting to X, Y, or Z person. When, 
when it came, when did you learn how to balance that? Because this is a, we're always learning, we're always growing. Yep. At what point in your career do you, can you really think back on and be like, that's when I got better as a leader of people, a interviewer, being able to differentiate my own emotional feelings in those type of situations. Yeah, it, it's a constant evolution. And as we continue to go through, we have to really understand that none of us are perfect. We all were, God made us all different. And so we all have different areas where we need to improve, or we need to grow. And so none of us are perfect. You have to understand that whether we're talking about players, the absolute best player in college football, or the best player in the NFL, they're not perfect, they have flaws. The top coaches in the league, they all, we all have flaws. And so, but when you have the humility and the self-awareness, do that and understand that, okay, these are the flaws, these are the things we can work with, this is what I need as a GM, this is what I need as a head coach, this is what I need as a coordinator to make sure that I can fill in the gaps in the areas where I need help in. So that's a critical part. When you're going through to, whether you're assessing a player or interviewing a person, you have to have a clear vision for what you're looking for. Right. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. if, if you go out and you're, you're looking for a certain thing and you don't have a, a vision of exactly what you need, then you're gonna be all over the place. Yeah, discombobulated. So mm -hmm. you have to have a clear vision and still have an open mind. Mm -hmm. Again, still cast a wide net, but it's critical to know exactly what you're looking for. And when you see those areas, these are the pros, these are the cons, these are the areas you need to improve, but are those things that you can work with. And, and I think that's the critical thing because if you're looking for perfection, it just doesn't exist. Right, yeah, you're None not gonna of us find are. that. Yeah. Right, right. So, so I think for myself, it's, it's a constant evolution mm -hmm. in understanding that no one's perfect. Now let's look at the areas that know exactly what we need and make sure this person fits in with what we need. And that's what was exciting about this process. We knew what we needed going into it. We casted a wide net and it was just made so clear, again, to all of us that this was the right head coach for us right now and we're really excited. I know that Raheem <clears throat> has talked multiple times about his like pillars of coaching. And mm -hmm. that was something that he, he, he mentioned a lot. We're just actually coming off of his introductory press conference. We're recording this actually the day after y'all introduced Raheem as the yep. new head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. And he brought it up a couple times in that press conference. I assuming he brought it up in the interview process as well, was there one pillar or multiple pillars of what he spoke about that you really gravitated towards and you, you thought as a general manager, that's gonna help me be a better general manager too? Yeah, and it's the collaboration. Mm -hmm. That's a, I know we say collaboration a lot, but it's just the truth. It's, yeah. the, it's the collaborative nature that we're gonna work within. And that's a critical piece because like I said, there are areas or that I need help in, there are areas that he needs help in, everyone in the building. But when you have the right humility and when you're able to listen and have some humility to you and, and listen to other people around you and empower people, that's critical. And we keep adding the right people in the building and then having that collaborative process in whatever we do. And it's really stuck out with the, the last week and a half that I've been able to work with him. Mm -hmm. It's been a very collaborative process, not just with me and him, but with, with Zach, and Jimmy and Marquise and Kyle Smith and Ryan Pace. It's been a very, uh, Greg Beatles, mm -hmm. it's been a very collaborative process because there's a lot of major decisions that we have to make, but everybody has that mindset that we're gonna, we're doing everything we can do to help this team win. And when everybody has different strengths and weaknesses, but we're putting together a puzzle and we can have that right plan. So it's what stuck out the most is the collaborative nature that he works under. I love that. Now, I, I'm really excited, I think, to get to the next <clears throat> chapter of the year because we've been in the coaching search for so long. The month of January, it to me felt like it was 75 days, not 31. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you probably felt very similar. Every day bled into the next one. Yes. Um, so now you have Raheem Morris in the building, filling, have filled out majority of the coaching staff. Yep. Now it's finally time that y'all can kind of start really getting into the nitty gritty of a roster and, and yep. seeing what you have and kind of, I think, building out and doing the things that are fun and the reason why you get into this job. Yep. For you, what excites you about the next stage of 
you know, combines coming up, free agency is going to open up. I mean, it, draft, all of that is going to come in waves. What excites you about this next chapter? So excited. So right now our college scouts just got in town um, yesterday mm -hmm. and we're having the February meetings right now. February mm -hmm. meetings are when you, you're just going off film. Right. Right. There, there hasn't been, no one's worked out or or had zoom meetings or anything like that with the no one's been in the combine and we don't have um confirm uh measurables right on most of the players or 40s or any of that stuff so the underwear olympics hadn't happened yet <laughs> this is just football right right so this is just the scouts in the room just putting grades on players and stacking players based off their the football games and so that's fun so as soon as we wrap up here. I know we have one more event at the facility, and, and I'm going to be in the February meetings with the scouts. Mm -hmm. We'll work through those. Next week, the coaches come in town. And when all the new staff, and like you said, there's just a few pieces we need um, to keep working through with the right. staff. But once the staff is in place, we'll go through the regular assessment on our roster. We'll have those discussions, and then we'll get right into free agency. And we'll be, the coaches will get their players that they're going to look at. We'll have those meetings and go through the profile meetings of, what the prototype is for this defense, and then we'll really get prepared for those free agency meetings. It's going to happen fast. Before you know it, we're going to be at the combine. Yeah. And then we're going to get right into that next uh, level of draft meetings. We get into free agency. Mm -hmm. So it's happening fast, but it's been really fun because we went through the process. You want to take your time, do things the right way. We went through the process of finding the right coaches, and it's been an excellent process. And now we're going to get into going out and hunting for the right players. It. I think it's the most fun time almost of the entire year outside of games and everything like that. I'm curious too, you know, talking about the process and everything like that, and I, I made mention to this earlier, at what point in your career did you feel like you kind of like found your niche? Like you felt like this is what, I, I want to be a general manager one day, but I fell in love with this part of the process. Yeah. When, when was that and what is that for you? That's a cool question because they're, they're all real moments like that. Right. I think when, when, when people are doing things they're passionate about, and that's what it's all about. If you're passionate about something, then it's not a job, right. whatever it is. I had this conversation with my, my oldest daughter, London, mm -hmm. um, a couple months ago. We we're sitting down talking and she's really into competitive cheer. And we're talking about it and we're talking about what do you want to be when you grow up and what do you want to major in in college? She's 14, so mm -hmm. getting ready to go to high school. I know how much, how passionate she is about cheer. And I told her, I said, you just need to find what you're passionate about. Right. And when you have something that you're passionate about, it's never going to be a job and you're always going to be hungry. Every day is going to be like you're an intern. I've been in this business for um, 21 years now. Mm -hmm. Every day I come in, it's like it's my first day and I'm so hungry and so excited about what I'm going to do on that day. And there, there was a moment and, and I remember I didn't know a lot about the business when I got into the business. I had never been to an NFL game. I just loved football. I loved training for it. I loved the games. I loved the process of getting prepared throughout the week. I just loved ball, going through middle school, going through high school, and then going through college. And what's the next step? And I felt like, you know what? It's just, I guess coaching is the only thing. I didn't know a lot about the front office, yeah. but I was blessed with a great opportunity. And I ended up working in the business and I was an advanced scout, and it was probably two to three years into that process as I went intern, advanced scout, and it hit me that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm. This is natural for me. I love it, and I didn't, I never knew that this really existed and this part of it, but I knew that's what I, I was supposed to be doing. And even now, as you continue to grow, this is, I'm so excited. I feel like that the same when that moment hit me that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is what I'm excited about doing. That's why I love it so much. That's why there's there's ups and downs. There's mm -hmm. pressure. There's all those things. But those things really don't affect me. I come in every morning very excited about doing this because I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I love that. I think that's good advice, I think, for people everywhere, regardless of what walk of life you come from or where you are in your own careers. Like, there's always that opportunity to absolutely love. You want to absolutely love what you do yep. day in and day out. Yep. Otherwise, it's it makes the job difficult. Yes. So I, I, you brought up that you had never been to an NFL game yeah. when you started working for the Saints. What was the first game that you ever went to, the first NFL game that you ever Ooh, went to? That's a great question because I was, I was working on the sideline, um, interning in the, in the game day operations. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it was a preseason game probably in 2003. Um, I don't know exactly. I couldn't even see the field where I was working. I'm, I'm sure I was working in a tunnel or something right? like that. So yeah. I couldn't really see the field. Just running um, everywhere. But that was my first, like you said, NFL mm -hmm. experience. That was my first NFL game. I'd never really even thought about it much. I just loved football. Right. And I loved working in football. And I didn't really think past it. I, I, I knew I was going to play football as long as I could. And then I was going to work in it in some capacity. And I didn't know what really fit me. And I would have probably gotten to coaching. And yet that wasn't, that wasn't what really, some people were made to, to be teachers and yeah. to be in front of the players and to work on the schemes and the X's and O's, especially again, going through this process, it was really cool feeling that passion from all the coaches because mm -hmm. that's what they were made to do. Raheem was born to be a head coach. Yeah. That's what he was born to do. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't born to be a coach, but once I really got into working in the front office and it hit me that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So, um, yeah, I don't remember the specific game, but it was yeah. a preseason game and I was working in a tunnel. That's crazy. How do you watch <laughs> games now? Like as you know, you were in the tunnel running around, but now you're the general manager of the Atlanta mm -hmm. Falcons and you sit up in a suite. Mm -hmm. How, what are you like on game day? I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty even and I try to not uh, live and die with right, yeah. with every single play. That's right. just, you know, even if inside you want, yeah. but I try to kind of stay I even and yeah. um, not too much. <laughs> I used to, I was an advanced scout for so long. Uh -huh. So I'm used to being in the box with the coaches and helping them do things, yeah. which is easier to watch a game like that because when you're actually a part of helping do things up mm -hmm. upstairs, helping the coaches get what they need, mm -hmm. you're then like focused in, you're on focused it. Yeah. and you're doing something right. right. When you're not, when you're just sitting there, <laughs> uh, and that's hard, just like what our fans have to do. When you're right. just sitting in a you're game like, and watching, yeah. it gets a little <laughs> angsty, you know. Right. But um, but that's how I watch games now. I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining me. This how do you take your coffee? What's in yours? Okay, there's, it's embarrassing. I have to put like a lot of like syrups. And like cream, because I can't just do it like straight black. Let's I used try to, to. Okay, I used to not drink coffee at all. I only started drinking coffee when I turned like 24, 25 years old. Yep. So I've only been a recent coffee drinker in the last four or five years. Okay. So I'm still new to the game. Let's try to get to black. Okay. And and get all the. Right. All that other the stuff. Next Think about time, all that stuff every morning. Right. All that sugar and cream. I Come know, on. I Let's know. try to go black. Uh, okay. Right. <laughs> That's gonna be our goal. Okay. The just next. Tough uh, it out. Right. The next Tory Terry power Have hour. discipline. Right. 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 Sometimes if, if, if the right stuff is in there, don't worry about how it tastes. Yeah. That's what you have to do sometimes, right? There's, <laughs> there's, there's that discipline. We don't do. <laughs> there's discipline in life. There is. Right? There is. There are two pains in life. The pain of discipline and the pain of regret. You choose. Mm. So if you choose every morning to put all that crap in your coffee, <laughs> you could have some regrets at some point. Have the discipline True. to drink some bitter coffee and and have that acquired taste. But I enjoy, like, I want to enjoy my life, Terry. I want to enjoy the nice things and right. the sweet things in life. Well, and that's why in the afternoon I put a little bit of honey in there. Okay. But when you wake up and it's time to go to work, I'm just drinking black coffee. It's not time to enjoy. You got a lot of work to do. Right. And then maybe later on, four o'clock, I've got some things accomplished. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm going to put a little bit of honey and again, maybe a little bit of oat milk. Okay. And that's when you can enjoy yeah. something, but you can't just wake up. You didn't do anything yet. You just you slept <laughs> you all night and you're you going to You can't have a reward, reward just for sleeping. Yeah, you just get for a waking up for in the morning. Okay. So, that's the yes. goal. The next time we sit down, I'll have black coffee. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's, that's the action item. It's okay. not a goal. We're going to do it. Okay. Right? We're not we're not maybe or we're going to try We're going to do it. Black coffee. Okay. Noted. Got it. All right. Thank you for joining me. This was great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tori.